Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Trogly's Guitar Show. I thought we'd hunt on the gear exchange tonight. If you're not familiar, it's basically Sweetwater's new version of Reverb. Tonight's episode isn't sponsored by Sweetwater, but they basically have the exact same thing going on as Reverb. So let's go ahead and check out some guitars. First one that caught my attention was a 1976 Gibson Marauder. From far away, it looked like a nice minty condition one that hasn't been played a lot. But now that I actually look at it, it's been heavily modified. I had a ridiculous ridiculously clean Marauder once, and I was kind of hoping this is what that was. But now that we're actually looking at it, nope. It looks like somebody's actually stripped the finish off of it. We definitely have some replaced tuners on top of the non-original case. I wouldn't say this is a good deal at all. And unfortunately, I would not agree with that statement. But hey, look at that! Serial number publicly listed. I've been trying to get Reverb to do that for years because some guys like want to find their birthday guitar or an anniversary day slash year guitar. So being able to type that in and pulling it up would help and it could automatically link to like a police database so we can help get guitars back to who they actually belong to. So that's cool to see that they've got that going on here. Next up, we've got not a reissue, a real 1981 Les Paul Deluxe. These things have been going up in value lately, so that price was not too bad. Looks like we've got some buckle rash occurring as well as some worming, potentially replaced knobs. Everything else is looking okay on a surface level. Ah, it's been refretted. And we've got locking spurzels, so yep, this one's definitely player's grade. And at this point, you might as well put some P90s in here. Not for me, what's next? Ah, okay, something I have to buy for my guitar, the week guitar of the month collection. It's the Gibson Longhorn. So we were just talking about the Blackout series and how Gibson traditionalists hate EMG pickups and guitars. Here's the Longhorn series. It's kind of part of the Les Paul double cuts in a, a roundabout way. They're slightly different, but they came stock with EMG pickups. And believe it or not, there's a piezo pickup underneath our bridge. Now I've always been partial more so to the blue one, but the Sunburst was a different part of the Guitar of the Month series. If you're not familiar with how that goes, check out this video. Now I'll be honest, I'm really hoping to find one maybe around 1800. It can be done, but you gotta be patient. This one looks like it's number 62. It appears to be in pretty good shape. The problem with unbound fretboards though is you always get fret sprout going on and when you have lacquer over top of the edge of your fretboard you get separations like these happening so unless it was stored perfectly you're always going to have uncomfortable issues unfortunately. Because even if you shave down the sides of the frets to make them not pokey you're still going to have the cosmetic blemishes to deal with. But hey at least it still has the original case. And oh it looks like maybe they swapped out what kinds of EMGs were in here. But there we've got our two output jacks. And ah, okay, I see what they're doing, the old switcheroo. This is probably how it's gonna look when you get it, but this is how it looked when he first bought it. But thankfully, this is usually all on Quick Connect, so nobody would ever be the wiser in that you swapped electronics. Hmm, interesting. They allow you to talk about trades. If you do that on Reverb, they take your listing down and say you're not allowed to do that. Even though Reverb used to have an article that suggested that you both buy each other's guitars on Reverb, but perhaps too many bad deals happened with that, so now they're like, no, you can't even talk about that on our site. But they do have this new trade-in for cash thing. Okay, maybe the offers actually have gone up a little bit since I first looked at this. I mean, 512 for an instant cash offer on one of these double cuts is basically what Guitar Center would give you. I would say that's very low. These are like $800 nowadays, so I, I I guess that's not too bad since they're giving you the shipping label and everything. But now this, this caught my attention. A 2013 Rudolf Schenker signature? I need to get one of these for my Scorpions collection. 1619 is half what they normally list for. Even though I don't particularly like these reissue models, this is the one I do want to review and document because it's got the 70s style headstock to it. But wow, that's an 80s lift and reissue case. That thing's worth like 500 bucks on its own in slightly better condition. It just needs a new handle put on it. But this is one of those red pick guard ones. And to be honest with you guys, I clicked on this because I thought it was a scam. But now it's saying Jeff's music gear? That's Sweetwater's own restock shop. There has to be a headstock repair or crack in the body, not original something. Okay, it's got a little bit of a blemish, but I mean, for this price, I could live with a little bit of wear and tear. I know I kind of have a reputation of being a picky collector, but it's all relative to price, right? I mean, if I had to pay top dollar for something, I wanted to be clean, but this, this is really nice. How has it lasted two months? Yeah, that's gonna be a buy for me. Yeah, now things are starting to get good. Have you ever seen a double cut standard look like this? They call it Midnight Burst. 
Not sure if that's the official color, but that is gorgeous. One of the best tops I've seen with this cool color combination. We've got some sort of like a compass thing going on for our poker chip. Not so sure about that, but I wish they would have gave us more photos of the top of this one because that is beautiful. What's with the gear exchange and everybody missing the handles? <laughs> but that does look to be an original case. Appears to be in pretty good shape. Just needs some strings trimming, a little bit of wear and tear. 2000 bucks for this, I would say that is a fair price, all things considered. In fact, I could see that selling for a little bit more just because of the cool finish and top. But hey, we just recently talked about Angus Young in that prototype episode, which I've received some pretty good offers on that, but everybody keeps telling me to keep it. My whole thing is I've got a couple of really expensive guitars that are available to me if I want to pay crazy money. If I can get crazy money for that cool piece and transition it into something else that I do want in my collection a little bit more, I'll go ahead and do it. But until I get an offer that makes things happen, I'm not going to let that thing go. It's too cool. I didn't buy that one with resale in mind. But here's one of the Thunderstruck SG. It's cool because it's got the lightning bolt inlays. I would definitely like to document some more of the ACDC signatures because Angus Young, he's awesome. I'm really surprised that Gibson hasn't started to work with him again and just have a brand new Angus Young SG always in production, the Angus collection. But this one looks to be a, whoa, whoa, player's grade, wow. Dings in the top like that turn off a lot of potential buyers. Yeah, I'm not so sure about that one. But hey, here's a government series SG. These were toted as being instant collectibles. Series 1, yes. Series 2 has always been a little bit of a tougher sell. They don't go for quite as much. But to find a mint condition set of any of these will be pretty difficult. I'm always on the lookout for really clean ones, because I think they would look good in the future museum. But I'd probably be about $500 under that. But here's a cool one that Daniel's been posting all over. So in 2017, they had a Nashville Black Beauty that was a limited edition. So basically, it's a three pickup Les Paul Custom made at Gibson USA. This is not a custom shop. You should not be paying custom shop pricing for them. Sure, they were limited edition and they have a little bit of a cool factor due to that. So they sell for more than usual Gibson USAs. It's kind of like the classic customs of the era but I don't think I've seen one go for about five and a half thousand before. I think he's dreaming a little bit on that. However, they are kind of cool. So we'll have to see what the market does. Another cool one that had this limited edition medallion on the back was a Koa Top Les Paul Standard. Now what's kind of cool about this one besides being a Koa Top is the fact that it has true mother of pearl inlays, whereas most standards are just the acrylic material. But there we go. We can see a limited edition medallion numbered at a 150. Future collector's items for sure. And to be fair here, he's the only one on the market, so I mean, you can ask whatever you want. Another cool one from this era is the Fort Knox Les Paul Custom. These things are ridiculously cool, and they do have a slight cult following behind them that makes them sell for pretty good money. But it's just an all gold Gibson USA Les Paul Custom, but it looks completely custom shop. In fact, I'm surprised they just didn't make these things in the custom shop because they're just that cool. If anybody's selling one of those at a reasonable price, please let me know. That needs to be documented. But speaking of reasonable prices, look at this one, VOS from 2012, and it still has the tone sticker. You just don't see that too often, but it looks like somebody's put a B7 Bigsby on it, so that means you can take it off if you don't want that on there. But this just looked new old stock to me. 2012, I believe is the year of the laminated fretboard, so maybe some people don't want that. And if you don't know what that means, it's basically like a two-piece fretboard that they glued together. In the end, does it really matter? Probably not. And in fact, wow, that's the first time I've ever seen an unbound guitar have that. That looks really cool. I would be open to Gibson doing that more on like studios and tributes to make them look interesting. But well, this one's at $3,400 plus $100 shipping. I would say that's about top market value. So that is fairly priced for the presumable condition of this one. Next up here, I found a Jerry Cantrell Wino. These things never really sold for much for a premium on the used market, but that's a fair price. It's almost brand new. This is another interesting one with the piezo, but you can check out this full review and demo if you need to learn more. And Mr. Cantrell also had some Epiphone signatures that we reviewed in this episode. But when I got to the end of my Gibson searching, the gear exchange started to show me other things. For example, we've got this 1981 vintage Ibanez, six and 12 string combination. It's 3000 bucks. I, I don't know if that's a good deal or not, but it's interesting. Double cream pickups with double harmonica style bridges. That's pretty baller right there. And then you get the great wood grain. It almost kind of reminds me of a PRS, the way that they've sculpted the horns here, but I'm having trouble seeing where's the seam line. It's probably there. It's either that or they really used one big piece of mahogany or whatever kind of wood that is. You even get your comfort cut back here. Strap buttons, interesting locations. 
It looks like we got a little bit of figuring in this neck. Yeah, looks like actually figured mahogany of some sort. And it's adorned with some pretty cheap looking tuners. That might be a nightmare to keep it in tune. But nice brass nuts. And then I was shocked to see this, a 2004 Epiphone Baritone Les Paul. So this one's in bone white. You can find these in a few different graphic finishes, like one of them is an iron cross. And to be honest, I think the cross kind of pulls this off better because the pickup spacing is so ridiculous on this model, but it would probably feel pretty good to play because you got all this room to strum. I'd really like to see Gibson and Epiphone bring back a baritone to their lineup because I think they would sell a metric ton of them but maybe there's a reason that they don't want to. But I would not mind reviewing and demoing one of these. I don't quite want to pay 900 bucks for one, but I do know that they are rare and it probably could sell for that. But I think that's enough guitars for tonight. You'll have to let me know what are your guys' thoughts on Sweetwater's gear exchange. I definitely feel it's getting there and there's definitely a lot more items being listed on it. And that's really what it takes for a marketplace to expand is the wide acceptance. I was happy when I got the email that said they're keeping the gift card payout option to have zero fees completely. Cause that's great if you're trying to get a new guitar. Cause if you're ordering online, you're probably gonna get it from Sweetwater anyway. But it's nice to have the option as well if you just want to cash out. For me though, I hardly have enough time to list on one place, so somebody needs to come up with a good program that will list on Sweetwater's Gear Exchange, Reverb, as well as eBay, and maybe even your own personal store, all pulling from the same stuff, because I bet they could make a lot of money, because most things are not geared and tailored towards Reverb yet. Because I used to use a program like that for eBay listings before I got too scared to sell on that site. All right, troglodytes, that is going to wrap things up for today. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will catch you tomorrow on the next one. Take care. If you enjoyed tonight's episode, consider subscribing. I post videos like this every day. And you might even enjoy this next one.